who should you take advice from? So when you're saying who should I take advice from, what, in what perspective are you talking about? Uh, in life in general, or uh, say with finances, um, or investing, any, any way to lead you down a better path in life and financial fitness. Okay, I got what you mean. Um, the the key is you have to take advice from people who live through it, not people who read a book about it. But with all that being said, hey, everybody, welcome back to Passive Money Plan. I'm Curry. That's Alex over there. My directions be off sometime. Uh, but today we're going to get into giving uh, who should you take advice from, especially if you're trying to get from mm -hmm. one step to the next or you're trying to, you know, endure certain things in your life. Where should you be taking advice from? And, you know, on social media, YouTube and things like that, it's always a so-called quote unquote expert out there. But the truth of it is, is some of these people ain't even old enough to be experts or never lived through situations to be an expert. Uh, you know, it's great to read about what happened during a certain time frame, but unless she was actually in it, then you really don't know the nuance of it. Um, well, all that being said, Alex, what you got? Well, someone who does this, uh, I can relate to this topic. I mean, I take advice from you. Um, there's other people say at work that, um, that I meet contractors, have their own businesses that are, or have real estate. Um, we actually did a podcast with one of them. Um, you know, so there, there's, it's mostly people that are older than me. Like you said, you said a lot of YouTubers are young and they haven't lived through things. And it's true. Um, the older crowd is who I hang around the most and they have the most knowledge and experience. And especially if they walk down the right path in their life and they can, I've learned that they're the ones that can lead the younger crowd in the right direction if they went in the right direction themselves so i think it's a uh, it's important to listen to those and i and especially listen to people no matter where they come from um, i think there's a lot of judgment from people on others that might say oh he doesn't know what he's talking about um if he's rich why is he still working i hear that a lot uh mm -hmm. or you know why is he not retired somewhere on the beach and uh there's a lot more aspects and perspectives on finance and life itself and people need to be very open-minded when discussing investing finances business that whole spectrum and I, I agree with you um the you know the thing that chaps my butt and i'm not calling out no particular names here is when I see um, well I'm old enough to call them kids but when I see kids on social media they all 23 years old talking about how to survive a recession what they need to do in a recession um, first off these people have never been through a recession they might have their parents might have they was you know snotty nose kid you know during the last you know big recession you know 08 and things like that but they really never had any skin in the game or any risk involved besides if mom or dad didn't pay the mortgage and they was out on the street, but they don't know the ebbs and flows. And uh, I look at, you know, I look at a lot of social media content and it's some people that I follow, which are older, who's been through, you know, different cycles, going through different things. Uh, I mean, you know me, I quote Warren Buffett a lot. And the reason why I quote Warren Buffett a lot is because he's lived through a lot almost the last hundred years of, you know, the American, you know, economic cycle. So that's why I listen to him because he's been through this. When he say be greedy when others are fearful is he's telling people, this is how I made my money where, you know, everybody look at me on top of the Forbes list. And he's saying be greedy when others are fearful is because that's exactly what he did through different economic cycles. You know, the 87, the 80 recession, the 70, the 79 recession, uh, the 2000.com recession, the financial crisis, you know, I mean, he's he go back way further than that, but he's been through different economic cycles, but he lived through it. He had skin in the game. He had boots on ground. Uh, it's other people, uh, and I'm not going to shout out the channel on here, but it's other people who's lived through uh, housing recessions, been through housing markets during a recession, you know, the 80s, the 90s, 2000s, you know, financial crisis, who's actually did that. 
So those are the people I'm going to listen to, you know, people that's been through it. I'm not going to just, oh, because somebody has, you know, a hot channel or whatever, and they're just talking. I question information received. There's no way I can listen to somebody that's 20 years old telling me how to live through, let's say, this upcoming recession is like the financial crisis. How are you going to tell me what I should do when you haven't been through it? And then that's the thing I like about the channel. We always correlate, you know, with stuff that we've done. It's not a, it's not a, hey, you need to do this. Oh, we never did it, but this is what you should do. Or, or I read the book a long time ago. This is what they did. So this is what you should do. No, I do not believe. And I always say, I will never tell somebody to do something that I'm, I haven't done or something that I'm not willing to do. I mean, like we talk about being, you know, being super cheap. Now you, you, like I said, you like one step above that yeah. cheapest man in America, but you live it. You know, you're not, you're not saying, oh, this is how to make coffee. This is how to make cheap coffee when, but you're going out to Starbucks every day. You actually do it. Right. You know the cost, you know, and it was fun and it was great uh, on a short. You, you presented how to make cheap coffee. And then the guy, I don't know where he was from, but it was a commenter and I was going back and forth on him. He found a way to make it cheaper. Yeah, and I was like, okay, but that's the stuff. That's the stuff that that matters, you know. Like, okay, we, you know, you go through the processes, and then while you're going through the processes, and then just because the guy got on there and said, "Well, if you do this, you can make it cheaper," we didn't go. Oh man, we're we're YouTubers. We know what the hell we doing. Yeah. We're not listening to you. It was like, okay, and then you did what now? You, you cut that in <laughs> half right here, and yeah. we implemented. It's not, right. it's not a game of hey, just because you see me on this on the channel that. I know everything, but that's what it is. We, you know, I'm okay with, you know, it's a better way to do it because it's always a better way to do anything. But I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, yeah, you should live on 50% of your income if I ain't living on 50% of my income. I live on, I live on 20% of my income. So that's, that's what I'm saying. And I don't even, you know, I don't want people to go as hard as me because I know it's, you know, something, it's a different mindset to go that strong to the, you know, you know, you used to go a hundred percent spending your paycheck to uh, dragging it all the way down to 20. So let's just meet in the middle. Let's just, let's just try to work on a 50%. And then, you know, you're starting to stack and build off of 50% of your income. And it's 50% is way more than 99% of Americans are doing anyway. Those are things that I care about is it. like, hey, I'm going to say something that I'm doing or I'm willing to do. I'm not going to say something that, oh, I saw in a book somewhere because right. I don't want to say it. If if I try it and it didn't work, I'm, oh, I'm just going to say it because it was in a book or I've never been in that situation. So like and I remember when uh, when you were doing your first uh, real estate uh, investment and then we got to a certain stage of it. And I just I texted and I was like, hey, I don't know right, this part right, again. Right. Right. Yeah. I, I don't. I'm not gonna make it up for you just so you can feel happy. I, I don't know that part of the game. And that's just but people want to admit what they don't know. They just want to make it look like, oh, I'm the expert, everybody should listen to me. And that's not it. And like for us, the reason why we talk about the recession, I've lived through it. I was a guy that bought the house at the height of the 2007 financial crisis. And I was a guy that found a way to get out of my house without losing a dime and then being in debt and from being in debt uh, during the financial crisis worked it for my favor to get out of debt and then to build a portfolio. Just like That's why I talk about it. Just like when I bought my first house, um, you had told me I bought at the top of the market. And then when the market went up from there, I was like, what's going on? Because, <laughs> you know, I didn't know I had never experienced that before. So I was trying to see what was going on. But like we've talked about, that was like an anomaly happening in in the real estate market. Yeah. And, and that's what, it, and that's what it was. I mean, COVID happened. If COVID didn't happen, let's say COVID didn't happen and the interest rate didn't drop all the way down. What I meant by the top is it won't be the fast transaction of fast appreciation. Like from, Oh, I'm going to use Florida's market. Cause I can't use the national market in it, but in Florida's market, it got hit the hardest, you know, you add in Florida, you add in Arizona, you add in Vegas, you know, the tourist retirement destination uh, got hit the hardest. So when I started buying in uh, 2012, it was still the market still hasn't started appreciating in Florida. 
And then it appreciated from 2000, let's say mid-2012, all the way up to 2018. And when it was appreciating, that a nice clip, you know. And then, you know, using the, the you know, average, let's say, 5% appreciation per year. And then the interest rates was already, if you remember at that time, the interest rates was already, housing rates was already around 5%. I don't forgot what number you got initially on your house. It was around 4 5%, I believe. 4%, and, 4 yeah. Yeah, yeah, so 4 or 5%. And then, so if we were still at that, if we're still at that level, people, and then, you know, let's say COVID didn't happen. We know it did. I know I can't exclude COVID. COVID didn't happen. And then interest rate, what sent the market higher up was when the interest rates dropped all the way down, especially for investment properties and stuff like that. COVID happened and all the people started migrating from the north down here, driving up prices. That's what sent us into this hyper, hyperbolic mode. But let's just say if we went back to 2018, 19, I think it was 19, right? When you bought your when you built your home? Uh it was yeah, it was 19 when they started it. And then I didn't close till 2020. Yeah, so it, let's let's go with uh it appreciated three to five percent from 19, 20, 21, 22. It still wouldn't have been as high as value as your house is now because right. of the big migration and stuff like that. It wasn't and the economic cycle was turning anyway, because you know we usually do about uh, seven to ten years for every recession. Last last real recession, minus that little blip during COVID, was you know two thousand nine, you know two thousand eight two thousand nine. So we was due for a you know a turn in the market in the real economy anyway. So the time was right. The situation changed and situation changed and it gave you appreciation, which is good for you. I mean. Happy I was wrong because, you know, you got, a, you know, you got, now it's a great deal. <laughs> you know, now it's a great deal with the appreciation that, it, you know, that it's gotten. But it happens. It happens. Yeah, if anything, too, I'm just glad that uh, the mortgage rate that we have is cheaper than mortgage rates today in Florida or rental prices people are paying. But yeah, and what you're saying sounds like... Uh, not to give parental advice, but you, what you always say to parents, like if you're not, if you're not living it, your kids aren't going to do it. And I'm sure you've heard parents and I've heard parents say to their kids, you know, make sure you save your money or build credit or do this, but they're not doing it themselves. And kids are just going to imitate what the parents are actually doing, not what they're telling them to do. And that's what it is. It's, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to, Tell somebody to do something that you're not doing. And, and this is what I mean. You it might come great with a great opening speech. You know, let's use the same scenario you just used with parents. Parents should be like, okay, save your money. Right. Now, if they live in it, if they if they not live in it and they just say, hey, save your money. So the kid like, all right, I'm saving my money. What to do next? Oh, well, shit. I don't know. I ain't never saved money in the first place. Right. But if. If you're actually doing it, if you're actually doing it, and then you tell the kid, hey, save money. And then, okay, mom, dad, I, you know, I saved $10,000. Now what to do? Then now, because you've been saving money, you can say, okay, now you start looking for, you know, looking for a good, you know, maybe index fund or something like that. Go index fund, uh, something that's pegged to the S&P 500, something that's pegged to the NASDAQ 100. Uh, you wouldn't say go put it in CDs because that's the only thing that people that don't live it do. Oh, yeah, put it in a CD. Get 1%. Or they still think it's the 80s. <laughs> they still think it's 80s. Oh, you can get 10% return on a CD. When the truth is, is that like 1%. Because they are not living it. So in that surprise time that the kid do actually listen to that parent that say, oh, save money, then what do you do? They don't know. And then just like like I said, the younger generation of YouTubers who haven't lived through an economic cycle or haven't been investing in an economic cycle, I can't say lived through because if they was born, they lived through it, but they haven't been, had money in a game during an economic cycle. And then they be like, all right, well, now the stock market went down. What do I do? Go buy. Go buy what? What's the best performing stocks during this cycle? Oh, they don't know. They don't know you go defensive. You know, when it's turbulent in the market because you just you just want a portfolio just to hold serve while you're just collecting the drip from the dividend and things like that to wait out the tide. And then when the tide is starting to bottom in the real economy, like when the 
real economy start at the bottom and everybody think the world's going over. The stock market is already have a six to 12 month lead time and they already looking at it. So when the market bottom, like in 09, when everybody's exiting their 401ks and stuff like that in March of 09, that's when the stock market bottom, when everybody thought the world was coming to an end and the stock market started to ascend. So you got to understand the stock market is always six to 12. So, you know, you, you in defensive stocks when it's a lot of turbulence, like now, you know, people don't know what's going on. And then you just ride it out there. You know, you ride the drip, you ride the dividend, you're in good, uh, high capitalized companies. And then when the real economy started going down worse, that's when you pivot some of your portfolio to growth moving forward. But if you haven't lived it, you don't know. If you just speaking, I'll just say it out your ass because that's what you read in the book. You don't know what's next. And that's question information received. That's what I say all the time because I see uh, YouTube channels with kids. I mean, literally, this one guy's like 21 years old talking about this is how you survive a recession. What's your portfolio the last recession? Legos don't count as a portfolio. You know what I mean? That's, but that's what they have. So that's all I'm asking people. I'm not saying that everybody needs to listen to us, but when you listen to somebody, listen to somebody that have credentials. Just like when I tell, when people say, hey, I'm going to look up a financial advisor, I said, okay, find a financial advisor. But the first thing you need to find out is what is that person invested in? Do not let this person invest your money anywhere if they don't have their personal money invested. Because, and the truth is, most financial advisors that run these corporations, they don't have money invested in anything. Their investment is to get you to invest their money and they live off of what you've done. That's how it works. Exactly. Well, guys, with all that being said, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment down below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, share, and we'll see you guys in the next video.